Hey everyone, welcome to the All of Jungle full gameplay tutorial. Before we start, let's first talk about his items and runes. Currently, this is the ideal standard setup and feel free to use this as your guide. For better understanding, I will explain the reason on why this is my build. Going to the items, the first item that you would go for is the Black Lever. This is really good with Olaf because it gives HP, damage, ability haste, armor shred, as well as move speed, which all synergizes with this kit. Another alternative is the Trinity Force, but this is a lot riskier and I would personally go for the Black Lever because it is a safer build as well as it is something that you could complete before the first dragon, which is very, very important. Next item that we would go for is the Steel Plated Glory. Another alternative would be the Gargoyle Enchant. So you would want to go for the Gargoyle Enchant if you don't have a tank in your team or you're having a rough early game. If you have Enchanters, if you have Frontline, and you would want to carry the game, Steel Plated Glory is a better option. So with the boots, you would rather go for the Plated Steel Caps rather than the Mercury Threads because you have your ultimate to prevent all of the crowd control. So Steel Caps is a way better option for you. Then the next item that you would go for is Death's Dance. This is very good with this kit. Synergizes well with the second skill. If you're able to get a reset, you get a lot of HP back, makes you a bit more durable, and it has damage as well. After Death's Dance, this would depend on the game. If you're going for the Gargoyle Enchant, you could go for the Sterex Gauge for the double shield. If they have a lot of AP, you could go for the Visage. And if you need more damage, another alternative would be the Divine Sunder. So either of this is okay, and it depends on the state of the game. Then the next one would be the Guardian Angel. This is really good because you get to the late game wherein Olaf becomes very squishy and Guardian Angel gives you a second life to try to turn the game around. Then the last item, which also depends on the game, if they have a lot of AP, you would go for the Divisage. If you need to be more tanky, you could go for Randowins. If you need more damage, you could go for a Sunder. So it depends on the game. Going to the runes, the first rune that you go for is the Conqueror. This is bread and butter for Olaf. You could easily proc this in one combo. For the next rune, we go for the Triumph. This has good synergy with your second skill as well as the Death's Dance. If you're able to complete, you would be able to get a lot more HP once you're able to get a takedown. Then the next one I would go for is Conditioning. The reason why I go for Conditioning is that your ultimate removes your armor MR and this would try to help put it back and make you a bit tankier in team fights. But another alternative that you could go for is bone plating if you would want a even stronger early game. Then the last rune that I would go for is Pathfinder. This give, makes us more mobility and the standard jungle rune for us. So that is all for Olaf and I will see you guys in game. Going to the game, this will teach you the tips and tricks, do's and don'ts, and advantages and disadvantages of Jungle Olaf. So the current matchup that we have right now is Olaf versus Jax. And this is favorable towards Olaf in the early stages of the game. But when it gets to the later stages, this would favor the Jax because he has more scaling and is one of the best late game champions there is in Wild Rift. So the number one thing that we need to do is to prevent Jax from getting there. So how do we do that? Is that we need to play aggressive as much as possible and contest the Scuttlers or even potential invades. So the clear that I'm doing right here right now is the red side clear where I clear my red buff, Krogs, Raptors, and I look to invade. Ah, I look to contest the Scott wherever the Jax goes. So the skill that I start is my third skill because it is, it is the fastest clearing skill at level 1. So you'd only want to go first skill first if you're looking for an invade or you want to catch someone at level 1. But going third and second is a lot safer or clearing the jungle and is a bit more efficient rather than going third first or first second. So this is the safest and best way to clear the jungle. The only problem in here is that you can't do level 2 ganks because you don't have your first skill. So the reason why I'm looking at the bot always is because I want to punish the Yi since he has no flash. He has ghost, ignite, and the number one tip if you're playing jungle is to always gank lanes that have no flash because if they have no flash they have a harder time to escape so once i'm level three the scuttler will spawn i have ward a ward on the bot side so i go for the top side i assume that jacks will be going there so we look to look we look for the contest and lo and behold we see the jacks we get a first kill we slow the jacks we force the flash and that is a win for us so once jacks has no flash he will probably go for the bot scut 
So once I get the top scuttler, I immediately go bot and try to punish the Jax since he has no flash and we have a better matchup. So Jax is probably starting the scut and Lux got a great bind. I try to catch the Lux, my axe miss. So I disengage. So I, sh I, sh I assume that Jax has already gotten the scuttler since the icon... If you look at the minimap, the icon has already disappeared. And if the icon disappeared, it means that the scut has already been taken. So even though I'm able to deny one scut, I'm, I'm still able to burn his flash. As much as I would want to invade, I'm not that confident. And the bot side is warded, so they would know that I would be invading. So I opt to go to my own side instead and clear my jungle. So one tip when clearing is that you could always, there's an auto attack animation cancel with your second skill. So you always want to use auto attack then second skill for a for faster clearing and it's also very good in team fights as well. So for example, when I clear the group, when my second skill is up, I do auto second. You always also want to catch your axe. So all of this as I fast clear and as much as possible you would want to Clear your jungle before looking for a gank. I wanted to gank the top side, but this is a dead lane wherein both lanes just want to farm. Both have enchanter supports and hyperscaling ADCs. So the lane that I'm looking, I'm the lane that I would want to gank is the bot side because he doesn't have any flash. So what my bot spot my bot camp spawn. I start the red again. Dragon will be spawning soon. So I would want to look for a. At least one gank before going back and going for my dragon. Unluckily, the bot is warded, so I choose to the ward instead. I want, I, I think if I could go for a dive, I decide against it because the dragon will be spawning in 20 seconds. It would be too risky. So I go for my raptors instead while waiting for the dragon. So the scut is also about to spawn. My bot side is already, has already reset. Zed will be a bit late. So the first thing that I would want to take is the Scuttler. Lux gets a bite onto me. I look for the engage because I have a Shen Lulu. Once they're able to use their ulti, I immediately re-engage and Shen gets a great, great three-man taunt. We get the Jax down. We get two kills and win the team fight. So Olaf is really strong if you have an enchanter or a shielder behind you. For example, in that team fight, this was a 3v1. If I didn't have Lulu or Shen there, I would have died. But since I know my composition, I was uh, very confident that I could re-engage in that fight. So uh, we're able to secure the dragon. We're able to deny the Jax. We're able to take him down and delay their power spike. Because they have a strong late game. If you look at their late game, they have Jax, Kaisa, ay, Jax, Vayne, and Master Yi, which are three really strong late game champion. So they go for the Herald. I look to the contest again. I think my uh, the, the, the Jax is able to secure the Herald. We put, take down the Jax again. Uh, Yi is able to get the Zed. Able to get the reset. We lose the team fight. It's a bit unlucky. I was a bit late there because I cleared the Scuttler before going back. If I didn't clear the Scuttler before going back, I would have reached the Herald and maybe things would have been different. So it's a bit unlucky because... My teams don't have their ultimates yet. He was able to access the backline. He was also able to get the reset. So we lost the team fight. But it's okay. We're still ahead in the game. We're in. We have two kills. We have two assists. And we're farming well. We're probably still ahead of the Jax. So the next thing that I do is I try to look for the tower top side. So while looking at the top side, I see that the Master is bot. They use the Herald, ah, the Jax is bot, rather. They use the Herald bot, so I look for the trade in the top side because it's I'm too late to reach. And they, they would be able, they, they already got a tower. Even though, uh, even even though they're not pushing as a team, as a team. So we zone the Janna in vain. So my objective is not to kill the duo bot, but rather to get the tower, so at least we get a trade. The tower is really low. I disengage because there are four people already there. Shen has ulti, but it's still a very risky move to try and tower dive the opponents. So the, what I do here is I wait for the next minion wave. We fast push the wave. And this is where I will most likely strike. 
Once the tower is gone, Jan is right in front of me. I immediately flash in. We look for a kill. Jax is at the side. We see that he is flanking again. So, like what similar to the Rift Herald, I immediately disengage and go for the Yi. Uh, Chen gets an ulti onto me. I try to play a bit uh, aggressive. I get pushed down. Zed gets a great ulti. I get binded. But Zed, great uh, shurikens to get the team fight win. So, this is a 3 for 2 plus a tower in favor of us. And it's something that we need to keep up. We need, still need to play aggressive because they have a strong late game composition. So if you look at our late game, our only late game is the Kaisa. It's not doing too hard right now. In fairness, their Jax is currently 0-2. So it's something that we're doing right. But it's not yet enough to be able to snowball the game. So my bot camps are up and I go to go and farm my bot side again. And if you look at my items, I go for the Righteous Glory because this is really good in chasing down the immobile target. So Olaf is really good against immobile targets such as this Master Yi. He has no flash. Even though he's able to meditate, I have my third skill for the true damage. It goes through the meditate. We're able to take the Yi down. Lux gets a bind on us. And they go back. So the next item that I would want to complete before the objective is that's uh, Death's Dance because it is one of the most important items for Olaf. I will explain why later because I will show you why later. But basically, it it synergizes well with our second skill. If we're able to get a reset down, we're able to heal at least one fourth of our HP back, especially for low HP. The dragons now spawned. We're able to get the blue. I try to we play aggressive. I start the dragon because looking for a turn. Once I see someone out of position. I would most probably go and engage. So Jax is on the front. I immediately ulti Righteous Glory. I get a slow to the Jax. I play a bit safe. I have Shine and Lulu ulti with me. We get the Jax slow. 1 HP. And then we see the Yi flanking again. So we change target. We always want to kill the Yi once the Yi shows to prevent the resets. And then we we'll go another engage onto the Janna. Zed gets a great ulti. Gets a double kill. We tank the damage for our team. We get another axe in. Meanwhile, Kaisa gets the dragon. Zed looks for the engage. They're all low. I flash in. Get an axe. I'm not able to reach the low HP targets. Unlucky. Their Lux has stasis. We get down. It's a bit greedy from us. I could have triple killed if my axe was able to reach the backline. But unfortunate. My team greeds a bit. Uh, Master Yi gets down the Lulu. But we're able to take the... Herald. So it became Kaisa became the junglers because he's able to take down the both the dragon as well as the Rift Herald. So currently 1310, we're a bit ahead in the game. One to one towers. It's not enough. If you look at the gold, Zed is on the top with 8.2k. We're at 7.7. We are at least 1.3k gold lead ahead of Jax. And then here we see that there are three immobile champions at the mid lane. Great taunt flash by Shen. We take down the Janna. Jax comes for the response. Uh, there, he's able to get a stun. We fall down because the problem with Olaf is that when you don't have any enchanters and you're at ulti, you'll be very, very squishy and very easy to kill. So when you play Olaf, if you don't have any enchanter supports with you, you have to play a bit more safely. Unlike, uh, unlike if you have Lulu and Chen ult, you could play very aggressively because you know that you have a lot of shield behind you. So usually you would want to play Olaf if you have a enchanter support and if the opponents are immobile, such as the Lux, the Janna, so they can't do anything against us. So that's the best time to pick Olaf. So we clear our bot jungle. I see the Lux. A while ago, he has no more stasis and flash, so I immediately go for the punish. Lux can't do anything because we have our ulti to try to negate the snare. And look at that, we have our deaths done to so get our HP back. We put a slow onto the bane. Uh, uh, and we go bot instead. So I see that Chen ulti top, we're able to win the top fight as well. Thanks to the ulti. So I decide to go bot instead to get the tower. Because we're, we, only take, we have only taken one tower in the 11 minutes and 
We need to get more towers to be able to snowball the game better. So here, the HP is low. I assume that everyone's on the top side. There's two people down. One went to the, the fountain. I see that Jax is going down. I greed the tower. We take down the tower. I dodge the Lux ulti. I clear the wave. Unfortunately, Jax is able to arrive on time where he's able to punish us. We flash, but Jax has flash as well. And that is something that you do not want to do because it gives Jax items, uh, money. And with money, Jax will be able to get more items. And that's something that we don't want to happen because Jax will outscale us when it gets to the later stages of the game. We're still ahead. If you saw, look at the gold, we're at 10k. Jax is at 9k. We're still a good 1k ahead of our jungle matchup. But we have to play a bit more safely, especially we are going to the later stages of the game. So the next objective will spawn in about 1 minute. The opponent tries to do a gank on top side. We're able to outplay. Good for them. And I'm coming to try and help my team. Just in case Kaisa gets down. I look for the a trade. Just in case. They go back instead. So I just farm my camps. Or I probably try to look to help my team. Because there's Ajax and Lux trying to go for our Shen. I pinged for the go. I have my ulti. I have a lot of damage in my kit. They can't do anything because I have Lulu ulti. And look at the death dance. Put my HP back. Just in time. Shed gets a great taunt. Two-man taunt. Unfortunately, goes down. I want to save help the Lulu. I put a slow. Lulu uses heal. Zed gets a great counter gank. And look at how strong my death dance is. I, a while ago, I was 1 fourth HP. I was 2 bars. Now, I'm at least half HP. The reason is that my second skill synergizes well with Dead Dance and I have Triumph as well so I get triple healing as compared to the usual normal healing where if you would use another champion. So that is why Dead Dance is such an important item for Olaf especially in team fights you always want to kill one target as soon as possible to get your HP back as fast as possible because Olaf is a bit squishy and the moment they all target you you would be easily go down because inherently Olaf is not that tanky because when you use your ultimate you use you lose your armor and magic resist. So the build that I'm doing here is a more of a damage booster build where I go for the black lever for the damage and CDR. And then I go for the death dance for durability and the resets. And then the third item that I go here is Sunder. Another option that I could go here is Sterex, but I choose the Sunder because I already have a lot of healing and shielding in my kit. So if you don't if you're playing Olaf without an enchanter support, I would suggest going for Sterex third item as it would make you more tanky and last longer in a team fight. So once I take Scott, I look for someone to engage. I see Jax on the top side with my lens. I go for my Krugs instead. So, so far, we're in the lead, but we're not yet in the point that we could snowball the game. So here we see that he is farming bot side. I look to help our Kaisa gets off, uh, our Kaisa gets caught. So I go for the bot and set to like to look try try to look for the trade. So we need to take down the Yi. So the Yi goes down. I get that dance. Shen ultis me, but it's a 4v4. And me and uh both me and the Zed have no ulti. So we just choose to disengage instead. So I ping my Shen to go back because it's a bit risky. I don't want to risk it while our ulti is off cooldown. Because if you look at the our ultis, Zed's ulti is just got off cooldown but mine and Chen are still on cooldown. So the next thing that we want in this state of the game is try to try to look for fights as much as possible because they have a stronger scaling and when we force fight when we win and force fights it opens up more possibilities to get objectives to end to end the game a lot faster. So here I try to look for the Deward on Baron and I see that their duo is on the top side so I look, try to look for the bait. They don't bite yet, just yet. So we're waiting because if we start the Baron and they try to engage, it would be very hard for us. So the Lux tries to look for a face check. I go for the immediate engage because she can't do anything. We hard counter this champion. Even though Lux has flash, we have Righteous Glory to chase her down. And with Stasis, this we still take her down. So this is a 4v5. 
We look for another uh, bait. We force the team fight, and I see Yi chasing the Kaisa. So I also I immediately go for the Master Yi. Prevent him to get to the resets. We get a slow onto the three members. I play a bit safe. I see that Zed is going all in. They're able to take down the Zed. I have to play safe. We try to disengage. We're a bit low. My ulti is up. So I immediately look for the re-engage. We take down the vein. I get my death. That's look at the HP I'm getting. One eight one four to full HP in with two kills. I don't even have any healing aside from Death Dance. So we turn the fight. Pretty good play from us. We also get the Baron. So this is very good because we want to try to finish the game as soon as possible. So the Elder is spawning in 20 seconds. We go back. We get our Guardian Angel because this is the team deciding team fight. We have a lot of dragons. Once we take the Elder, our win will be most likely secured. So two of them are still down. Shen is going to split, probably split push bot since he has ulti just in to, to help just in case they start the Elder. So once I take the blue buff, I look to take all of the camps. I see that Jax is on the top side. Tries to look for the ward. I don't I don't want him to remove our ward. I see that the opponent plays a ward, so I choose to the ward instead. And at this point, I just want to buy time for our Shen to split push with Baron buff. So I remove the ward, I immediately disengage, but the opponent starts a dragon, they try to look for a turn. And I see that the three squishies are at the backside. I immediately go. Shen ultis with Lulu ultimate as well. I have my death dance healing. Look at my HP. Going back and forth. Lux tries to burst but she gives up. We're able to get all our HP back. And a clean ace from our team. With almost no counterplay. So Shen plus Lulu plus Olaf is kind of busted. So it's a... Uh, Trio combo that you could probably use as well in your games. It could. It doesn't have to be Lulu. Yumi is also a good alternative. We take the Elder. We push both sides. And here we will probably finish the game. And I think that is it. Hope you guys enjoyed our Olaf tutorial. We get the victory. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out. Before I go, there are three tips I would like to share with you when playing Olaf. The first is when to use the champion. Olaf is best used when the opponent has a lot of crowd control but little to no dashes in their kit. He can easily punish those types of champions and snowball the game. Olaf is also good when paired with an enchanter support for more survivability in a team fight. My second tip is his engage. Be careful when engaging because your ultimate will make you a lot more squishier. Olaf is an all-in champion so if you make a bad engage, Chances are you are easily bursted down. Only look for the engage if you know that your team can follow up. My third tip is the early game. Olaf is best used in the early game when the opponents don't have items yet. Use this to your advantage and take over the game when fed. If you have a bad early game, it is better to build tank and try to soak for your team rather than still building damage and getting one shot. And that is it. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe in order to see more content. Feel free to leave a comment if I missed anything and what champion you would like to see next. Thanks for watching. Ciao ciao! I'm